everybody! It's Pam from the Shoots with Roots program at Milner Gardens in Woodland. I'm not at Milner Gardens today. I'm in my front yard next to the forest on my neighbor's property and this is another virtual field trip. For today's virtual field trip I thought I'd talk about <laughs> woodpeckers. I'm not talking about woodpeckers. There's a very loud woodpecker that really wants to be in these videos, but there's something else very obvious happening out there in nature right now that I thought I should talk about because it's making a lot of us sneeze and that's pollen. Right here on these leaves in front of me, you can see some of them have this yellow dusty stuff and it's all over my porch. It's all over my rock path and it's even making my porch a little bit slippery. I'm also allergic to pollen and I'm starting to sneeze a little bit and I bet I'm not the only person who's wondering why does there have to be so much of this stuff? If you look closely at this trillium you can see yellow powder in the leaves and that's not part of the leaf that is all pollen. There's more over on this one and see if we get in there and we touch that you can see that that yellow rubs right off because it's all tree pollen. Well here's the thing pollen is really important for plant reproduction. Pollen is part of how trees and other plants make more trees. This is from a Douglas fir tree. I went out looking for some of the sources of the pollen in my neighborhood and sure enough a lot of the Douglas fir trees around here have lots and lots of pollen cones right now. Those tiny little cones are making pollen and Douglas fir trees make a lot of pollen. I read a study where people were looking at how much pollen Douglas fir trees produced and they found between two and five thousand grains per square inch and a square inch is this big. That's a lot of pollen. The good news is that Douglas fir pollen isn't usually one of the ones that people are allergic to but it does make you wonder why does it have to make so much. Well here's the thing those pollen cones, the pollen, this is information that the plants need in order to reproduce, to make seeds and make new trees. And the pollen on these pollen cones has to get to some cones on another tree in order to make that happen. And the way it travels is on the wind. And the odds that a wind gust is going to blow past these pollen cones and exactly hit a cone on another tree is actually pretty low. So for that to happen, the tree has to make a lot of pollen. Now not every tree relies on wind to pollinate. Right here, another tree that's making a lot of pollen right now are the big leaf maples. There's one right above me and the big leaf maple makes pollen not on cones but on flowers. Let's see if we can get any pollen to come off. Sure enough, there's a little bit of pollen dusting off of these. Now the big leaf maple doesn't make nearly as much pollen as the Douglas fir because it has help distributing that pollen. Big leaf maples are pollinated by insects. The insects come, they drink the nectar off of the trees and then they go to another tree and they end up spreading the pollen around as they do that. And that's how this tree gets the information it needs to make a seed and make a new tree. So pollen it's pretty important stuff and in fact a lot of the foods that we eat wouldn't be around if we didn't have pollen and we didn't have pollinators. This plant right here is a salmonberry plant and it's only got two petals left because it's already been pollinated and this one is pollinated usually by a hummingbird. So the hummingbird comes in, it drinks the nectar, you know I think maybe I need some props to show you this. Okay, so we have two flowers, right? And in the middle of the flower, there's a pink thing, and that's called the pistil. Not pistil, pistil with an I. This is like a straw that goes down to a delicious juice box of nectar hidden at the base of the flower, and the hummingbird is after the nectar. 
it comes in, it drinks the nectar, it buzzes around, it gets pretty excited, and these yellow things that are called stamens bash around all over the hummingbird's head. And in the process, the hummingbird's head gets covered in that dusty pollen. That means when the hummingbird comes to the next flower and it goes in to drink nectar from the pistil, which is usually sticky, then some of that pollen ends up sticking on to this pistil. It ends up growing a thing called a pollen tube down into the base of the flower, which means that salmonberry flower can turn into a salmonberry fruit. So that pollen that's out there right now, it's pretty annoying. There's so much of it on my porch, I nearly slipped and fell coming over here to film this video, but it's a really, really important part of how our native plants reproduce themselves. So maybe the next time you see that pollen and uh, you know, you're worrying about if you're gonna sneeze or not, it's not great for our allergies, but it's pretty important stuff. Now, for this week's challenge, you're gonna need a paintbrush. You're gonna get a paintbrush and you're gonna look for a flower that looks like it can be pollinated. You're gonna to try to find the stamens and the different parts of the flower and take your paintbrush and go in there and see if you can gather some pollen on your brush. Can you see that, those little yellow grains? That's from that trillium flower behind me right now. And then you're gonna take that find the same flower, it has to be the same kind, and go ahead and pollinate that flower. So grab a paintbrush or a Q-tip will work. If you don't have a paintbrush, head out into your garden and see if you can pollinate some flowers. And the cool thing if you have trilliums is that when this one gets pollinated, it's gonna turn a different color. I'll show you a little bit of that before we go. Have a good uh, week, everybody. Go pollinate some flowers, and I'll see you at the next virtual field trip. Bye! So this trillium is white because it hasn't been pollinated, and this one is purple because it has been. Cool, huh?